G'day viewers and listeners. Hey, it's Ed Fox with Nashville 2, nashville2.com. Nashville 2 is about telling your story because you're Nashville 2. So if you're a small business owner, uh, maybe you're an after school mentor, maybe you're a pastor, whoever you are, not a pastor like spaghetti. I always say that wrong as an Aussie accent, you know, Hannah, it's like pasta. Like, are you talking about Linguini? Well, his name might be Linguini, who knows? Anyway, sorry, off track, squirrel. Um, so yeah, if you want to tell, if you want to tell your story, we'd love to have you on the show. I bought this camera. It's called a HD camera. I think it's an ADHD camera. It can't focus. That's my story. Hey, uh, my guest today on Nashville Two is Hannah Rollweiser with Helping Hannah Professional Services. So Hannah, we'll get into how you ended up in Nashville because I don't think you were born and raised here in Nashville. But tell me a little bit about. Well, no, let's go there first. So how did you end up in Nashville? In the Na And by Nashville, I mean like the metro, you know, from like Columbia to Kentucky border, Lebanon to Dixon, maybe, um, you know, that sort of area. How did you end up in this area? Right. Okay. Well, first, I want to just thank you, Ed, for having me on the show. I really do appreciate it. I'm excited. <laughs> this is very fun. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, so I am from New York State originally. And um, when I was young, my father retired from selling New York life insurance for over 30 years. And so the usual destination is South Florida <laughs> for right. people from New York. Yep. And so I basically grew up in uh, the South Florida area. I went to college in Florida. And then in 1999, um, I came to Tennessee. And really, it was kind of prompted by my parents moved here to Tennessee, which neither of them live here anymore. I've, I'm the only one in my family living here. Still. Um, but yeah, about 23 years ago, I came right after New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, 1999, and I was in the Cumberland County area of Tennessee. So kind of in the middle of Knoxville and Cookville, right? somewhere right there up on the plateau. And I was there for about 16 years. And then because of uh, going back to school at Tennessee Tech and different jobs and and just kind of that, you know, my professional path led me west. And so I was in Cookville for a number of years working there. And then uh, what brought me to the Nashville area was first Franklin. I started working at a nonprofit there. And uh, the rest is history. I've lived in a few different places. I, I moved around quite a bit in uh, 2021. I was in Goodlitzville for a short period of time. And now I am in Nashville. Right. Yeah. My business office was in Goodlitzville for a while and, and we enjoyed that. Good. Uh, we had an office in Madison when I bought the business and then we moved to Goodlitzville. And uh, now we've just moved to Franklin. So we've done it the other way around, you know, because you started out. That's in right. Yeah. So uh, we're enjoying that. So tell me a little bit about, you know, when you were in the Franklin area, now that I'm here, you got any secret hangouts or great places to go for food or any fun things to do that you did while you're in Franklin? Well, I will tell you that, of course, it was, you know, we got to enjoy a, a few years there in Franklin before COVID. <laughs> so we were out and about more. Um, but there is a sushi restaurant in Franklin that I really enjoy. It's called Health Sushi. I don't know if you're familiar okay. with it. Health Sushi. Oh, Health Sushi. Okay. As in, un yes. as in opposite of unhealthy. That's right. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just a, a wonderful restaurant. They do everything made to order. And it's uh, wild caught organic ingredients. Um, they have a lot of vegan and veggie options as well. They have vegan sushi rolls. Um, and you can get things without rice, you can do brown rice, lots of healthy options there. Um, and they have, they've expanded their menu uh, with, I think, like ramen and poke bowls and a lot of good options there. So I really enjoy that. So if you like sushi, that's a nice place. Um, there is I, I a like part. I, lo yeah. I love sushi. I just love it cooked. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So it may, might not be your cup of tea, but, but there are, you know, but you can get some cooked uh, items, you know, yeah. there, soups and things that might be right. good for you, yeah. you know, as we move to the winter. Um, so the other place that I do like in Franklin, um, it's right on Wilson Pike. And I don't know, it's kind of confusing. Sometimes it's considered Franklin, sometimes it's Brentwood. But there's a park right there. It's um, called uh, Marcella the Brett Smith Park, I believe is the name of it. And I think I wrote it down somewhere because I wanted to make sure that I, I got this name right. But yeah, Marcella the Brett Smith Park. It's a big farm. It's got a lot of wildlife, a lot of beautiful um, nature paths. Um, 
the wildlife really, ha you know, it's the habitats there. So you can kind of see them engaged. And there's um, a mansion out there. There's some places you can kind of walk through. Oh, wow. It's a mid-century mansion. Yeah, it's really beautiful there. There's bike trails right off of Wilson Pike. And you can see, um, you know, the bike trails that kind of lead up into the park. A lot of people are, are riding bikes there uh, when the weather is nice. So I recommend that park. It's, it's, it's super nice. And of course, I mean, there are other things to do. Of course, the downtown Franklin area is, you know, a, a treasure there. You know? Yeah, we drove around there the other day. That's pretty cool. They got a lot of little fun stuff. My wife's like, oh, I could go there and I could go there and I could go there and mm -hmm. I could go there. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to have to spend a weekend down here sometime. So, yeah. okay, so tell, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, there's a great boba tea place there too for people who like boba tea. So I happen to like it, but yeah, it's right downtown. Mm -hmm. I want to open up a boba tea place and I want it to be uh, like uh, Boba Fett tea <laughs> uh, or Bubble Fett. That would that would make more sense. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I always like those uh, play on word uh, business names. Yep. You know, they're, sometimes they're a lot of fun as long as it's not confusing. So uh, Hannah, uh, one of the things mm -hmm. that you and I met through Connect Nashville, I believe, um, either they're online networking or they're in-person networking. Um, but I've, I've loved the progression. I love talking to business owners that progress through their journey as a business owner, because for a lot of years, you were an employee of businesses and nonprofits and such. You, you taught uh, in high school and then you've done some stuff at college while you were getting your PhD. Uh, tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. And then I'd love to hear a little bit about your business as well. The entrepreneurial journey for me has been a wild ride. <laughs> I mean, I grew up with the mindset of pretty much working for someone else. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in that generation uh, where you get a lot of degrees and you get those degrees so that you can find a good paying job. And, you know, that's pretty much been the mindset that I've had most of my adult life um, until, of course, uh, 2020, which was a life changing year for a lot of people. I was working at a nonprofit, which I, I love nonprofit work. I really do love helping people in the community, um, you know, fighting for social justice and those types of issues. I always find myself in those kinds of positions and those kind wow. of jobs. Um, so I, you know, my job at the nonprofit was really, I was overseeing, um, I was director of operations. I was overseeing all of the administrative uh, goings on in the headquarters office. Right. And I was, pretty much the gatekeeper for the president. So, um, you know, I was polishing all of those skills that really I had built up over 20 plus years of, you know, my professional experience. And that year in 2020, uh, we came home, you know, she sent us home to work. And so I was basically doing all of that work from home virtually. I was running the office and you know, managing all of the, the contractors, the subcontractors and consultants. So I started to think to myself, and, and I think the entrepreneurial bug had kind of hit me a year before. I thought I was going to do something else. I thought I was going to actually become a copywriter because um, I also have an English degree and I, I loved writing. But I realized that I'm too much of a perfectionist and writing copy was just taking me way too long. And there was no way that a client was going to wait three months for a piece of copy. So I decided, all right, I got to shift. I got to find something else. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I really liked it, but I needed to find something else. So I decided after having a conversation with a friend of mine and just basically bearing my soul to her and saying, I'm really not enjoying the work that I'm doing. <laughs> Mostly I'm not enjoying working for someone else. I'm not enjoying, be, you know, not um, being able to use all of my vacation time. You know, all of those things, I felt like I was just restricted uh, working a nine to five. And so... She put a little bug in my ear and she was like, well, you already do all this great administrative work. Have you thought about becoming a virtual assistant? Well, I started Googling everything there was to know about it and, you know, YouTube and found all these people online who could teach me how to do it. And I just put in my resignation at my nine to five and really just spent one month training my replacement there. And then in February of 2021, I was off to the races and that's, when I met you um, and most of the people in the Connect National and then of course other networking groups just start building relationships and kind of get back into it because that was something that you know as a nine-to-fiver um, who really wasn't dependent upon 
making relationships in the community. I was more of like that, the back end person, the, you know, the, the back office type person rather than being front and center. And so I wasn't, you know, my LinkedIn was kind of suffering, <laughs> hadn't even looked at it in years and, you know, or updated it. And, you know, so I wasn't really in that mindset of building relationships and making connections with people, even though the work that I was doing was really community minded, especially at the nonprofit that I'd worked at before in Cookville, the PBS station. So we did a lot of community um, activities and collaborations, but I don't know, there was just something different, you know, when I, when I became a business owner, when I just decided to own myself, own my services, own my skill set, and present it to the world, present it to people who needed, you know, my skills and my strengths to help them and support them. And so, of course, helping Hannah came from that because I've always felt like I'm a, I'm a helper. I've right. always been a helper at heart. Right. Um, yeah, so it just kind of evolved to that. And then I ended up getting referrals and clients and 2021 just kind of took shape. And so then you uh, you sort of pivoted, right? And have moved into more of a, you've, uh, I don't know whether people say niche or niche. I say niche, whatever. I'm going with niche. I'm going to own it. Uh, you niched down um, and you defined um no, I'm not going to say better, but uh, it was more defined what you wanted to do and how you wanted to help people. And one of the things that uh, caught my interest was the energy level that you bring to what you do. So when I see you network and, and you're bubbly and, and you, you really have a, a huge knowledge pool and that comes out when you're giving your commercial, right? So uh, I, that's why I was glad when you agreed to be on the show. I thought, yeah, this is some people need to hear this. So tell me a little bit about what you've niched, niched down to and what you're doing now. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a person that says niche. So that's okay. We're going to own it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I realized, you know, from the clients that I had and the work that I was doing as a virtual assistant, and really, you know, okay, so that was my title, but I saw myself as an executive administrative assistant because of the skill set that I had honed all of the years, I mean, 20 plus years of being a classroom teacher, you know, being um, a director of education at a PBS station and a director of operations. I mean, I had amassed a huge skill set and a lot of strengths. But the thing is, is that all of the clients, and this was another step in the entrepreneurial journey that I had to learn, um, you know, really the business, like setting up my business for success for myself, because I was doing it on my own. So I'm taking all of these clients on and I have a number of clients, but nothing is repeatable. Like I'm not doing the same thing for each client, right? It's all just customized to their needs and what they need. And so I think niching down really gets you specific on the absolute service product that you have just honed in on that you want to give to that client and it can become more repeatable it can become one specific thing that you do rather than multiple things that you do for multiple clients um, and so you can have as many clients as you as you want you know when you niche down but they can always expect those clients are always going to expect that that result that same thing that you're going to offer them that service that you're going to bring and so for me, I was noticing that with the client and how I found the niche really was um, just from trial and error, just from doing all of the different administrative things for people. And I realized that I, I'm just an organizer. I love to organize chaos. So if I'm working with you and you've got multiple you know, platforms and applications that you're using and documents are everywhere and files are everywhere and it's not making the work that we do as efficient as it could be, then I'm going to start streamlining and I'm going to start organizing things and I'm going to figure out a system. And so, you know, systems are just pretty much processes, tools, people, strategies that you use to run your business and to make it more efficient. And that's, you know, where I found HoneyBook. And uh, HoneyBook now is my niche service. Um, it is a powerful CRM platform. Uh, CRM is a client customer relationship management tool. Um, and CRMs are really, you know, it's, it's, they're not cookie cutter. It's not one size fits all. Um, it's really an individualized process, finding the CRM that works for you and your industry and your business goals. 
and what you want to get out of it. Um, how you take those day-to-day -day processes and tasks and put them into um, a system that works for you that keeps everything running efficiently. Um, so yeah, that's kind of you know what I've niched down to is just being a system strategist and helping people uh, streamline their their client management processes so they so their business can just run uh, without them really even having to do a thing and I, I really hear where you're coming from because i've tried I've, it seems like i've tried every crm there ever was and uh, you know my most uh being a guy that grew up with computers built computers back in the day you know uh for me as soon as google came out and they had google spreadsheets i'm like oh this is the best crm ever this will just this will just work you know and it doesn't cost me anything um but i independent of you i found honeybook right so like when you started talking about honeybook a few weeks ago in uh, connect nashville or you know because i hadn't been for a couple of months and i'm like oh man this is awesome because yeah i love it so uh so I'm, I'm so glad that um, I'm able to brag on you and brag on HoneyBook and then the skill set you bring to the table. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there, especially a lot of the service industries, your plumbers, your those sort of tradesmen that maybe don't do a lot of their invoicing. Uh, you know, my other business is a, is a, um, a managed uh, barter platform that allows businesses to trade their excess capacity or unsold inventory. And so we have a lot of those tradesmen and man, sometimes they take a couple of years to turn in invoices, right, to get paid on. And that's just crazy. Right. That's just crazy talk. You know, so they need it someone is. like you to help them. That's right. I mean, you're not collecting the money <laughs> that is owed to you. And so why not have a system put in place that does it for you? It just automatically follows up. Because I had a client who she would assign to me the follow up to her clients uh, to collect her money, to co you know, to collect on those invoices. And instead of me having to do it, if you set up a system that does it, it'll just automatically send that out and it'll do it for you. Um, so you don't have to be tracking down, you know, really what HoneyBook is so wonderful at is just, it's for people who want to manage their client processes, people who want to give their clients a seamless experience from inquiry all the way to payment and then some and everything in between. So I, I like to say, yes, you, you mentioned service-based providers, creatives, freelancers, really some small business owners too. A lot of small businesses use HoneyBook as their CRM. Again, it really just depends on what your business goals are and what your needs are. Um, but I like to help HoneyBook users um, optimize all the features of HoneyBook so it meets their unique business needs, you know? Yeah, that, and that's, uh, that's what excites me is because when I found HoneyBook independent of you, um, I was, I was struck because I've got multiple businesses because I'm sort of like a little bit ADHD myself and I'm off here spinning different plates and starting different businesses. That's what I love to do. People go, oh, you could be more efficient if you just worked on one. I'm sure you would say something like that to me. <laughs> and and you guys would be 100% right, but I'd be bored out of my head inside of two weeks. And so I, I give 100% effort to what I'm doing right now. So you and I, we're on Nashville 2 um, podcast. That's what I'm giving my effort to. But as soon as we get off, I'm going to move on to one of the other businesses and work on it for a while. And then I'll probably do seven businesses today that I work on for a little bit. And so guess what I need? I need somebody like you helping me do processes and systems that work. And that's one of the things I liked about HoneyBook because you can have unlimited seats, it appears, um, and, uh, for, for salespeople. And there goes my camera again. I don't know what's up with it today. Um, and then uh, be able to... Uh, do all of those processes and pipelines through through the different um, through the different businesses, but still within HoneyBook. So that that's exciting. One hundred percent, very exciting. Yeah, and I don't work for HoneyBook, but I do have a referral link for people who right. do want to subscribe to it, which is great. You might as well take advantage of that. That's what I did when I first subscribed and became a member of HoneyBook. Right. Um, to run my business, but there are so many fabulous features and really it's just like this one touch thing that you can set up. Uh, you know, if you have a website and you have a contact, you can set up your contact form on your website. So that the minute somebody submits on your contact form and they fill it out, it comes right into your HoneyBook system and then you can automate it, it'll trigger a response back to them. 
So when you're at the dentist or you're picking up your kids after school or you're taking a nap because you're a business owner and you want to take a nap in the middle of the day, it's okay because if you have all of that automated in your system, that's the beauty of having an automated system right. is that it takes those processes that you know you're normally going to do anyway, every day. And even just, it's not just for you, it's for your team as well. Unlimited, like you said, you can have unlimited team members. You can have unlimited team members for your client be in there as well. And they'll have a client portal and they'll have access to see exactly what's going on with their project. So I could, I could just talk about it, you know, because I really just love systems. I think it's so important. And if, and if people are not using it, then they really need to find somebody to help them create a system. Right. And works. if they're not using a good CRM, if they're still using a spreadsheet mm -hmm. like I was for so many years, um, and uh, I have found that just, you know, and I, I told you the other day at, at East Nashville, uh, Connect Nashville's East Nashville uh, networking event, that I, I don't feel like I'm utilizing but 10% of it. And I'm excited about the 10% I am using. So well, I'm looking forward to our meeting next week to talk about how to help me use more of it. Um, so, okay. So, you know, we could gush about HoneyBook all day. We could. Um, but uh, the thing I like about you is... I, I, I could highly recommend your service and the quality of person you are. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, what, what's the best way for them to do that? Should they go to your website and fill out your HoneyBook contact form and, and you'll get in touch with them? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that would be the best thing to do. Um, everything is pretty simple. I have a Helping Hannah Pro. Really, you know, I have that long title for my business, but I've kind of whittled it down to Helping Hannah Pro. So um, you can access my website by, you know, going to helpinghannapro.com. Yes, you know, I have my contact form in there, the HoneyBook contact form. It'll come straight to my, uh, my system. And also you can email me, uh, hannah at helpinghannapro.com. Um, and I'm also on Instagram. I'm, I'm getting out there and promoting my business on there as well. It's still fairly new, um, but I'm at Helping Hannah Pro on Instagram. Awesome. And so could our listeners maybe get a free consultation or what goodie can we throw their way? And don't tell me you do it for everybody. You're just going to do it for my listeners. That's okay. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do a 30 minute uh, consultation call. It's really just a time for us to just kind of have a, a, a easy chill conversation just to get to know each other, see if we're the right fit for one another, you know, to work together, because this really is a working together situation. Right. Um, what I do is um, I will set up your HoneyBook system within a week, and I call it a VIP experience. And I have uh, two different kinds. I have an ultimate and I have a deluxe. And it's just a one-time payment. You, uh, and if you're interested, after we meet on our consultation call, it'll take us to that next step. Um, I have a contract. You'll pay your, your invoice. And then we start. And I have a kickoff call um, to make sure, of course, you'll, you'll get you know, access to um, a drive folder that's going to ask you to provide information to me about all of those features and things that you're not using in HoneyBook that you want to get set up. Um, and there's a lot of things, you know, that I have to collect in order to do that back end process for you. So we'll talk about all that on the kickoff call. We'll go over, we'll map out the processes, and then we'll start with the VIP experience. And we meet, we have uh, two sessions um, in one day, and then I get started uh, for you. And I start working on it back end, and then I create your indiv individualized uh, HoneyBook system. And Lots of different features that come with it. It's all on my website. You know, there's brochures, uh, content forms, questionnaires, email templates, um, all these things, contracts, proposals, invoices, all these things. And I also do some training videos as well. So if you have a team and there are specific things that you need some training, uh, meeting videos recorded, on how to do certain features in HoneyBook, then I have that as well. So cool. And then with your background in in uh, spending so much time with nonprofits, I would say that you could you'd be unique uniquely positioned to help nonprofits with HoneyBook as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so the I know a lot of um, you know working with two different nonprofits. One of them actually, you know, they always have a bookkeeper, um, you know, either an agency or a subcontractor. Um, helping them with their um, their books. And so sometimes they use QuickBooks. Well, that's another great thing that you brought up because HoneyBook has all those integrations. So yeah. you can integrate QuickBooks. So if you're already using it, you can integrate that with, with HoneyBook. 
and it makes it seamless and it keeps all your records for you as you get paid. Um, so a lot of great things um, that you can do with that. But yeah, absolutely. I, I'm so excited to talk to you about that and, and we'll move on, but uh, thank you for sharing that information about uh, what you're doing. Now, so where did you end up? If you've moved from Franklin, which area of the metro are you in now? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm in the East <laughs> Nashville, trendy East Nashville uh, area. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so, okay. Well, so we've got we've got the sushi uh, health or health sushi, mm -hmm. what, what it, whichever mm -hmm. way that went. Health sushi. Mm -hmm. And then the park, uh, and they're in the Franklin Brentwood areas. So, uh, so what have you found so far in the East Nashville that used to be the the hood now is like the trendy. You know why that stuff gentrifies, right? Because when the people don't have any money, you know, they move into those areas and then they bring it up, you know, <laughs> and, and, and make it, uh, make it better uh, for everybody around. So I, I love East Nashville. Um, so what are you, what are you finding around that area now uh, that, that you enjoy? Well, I mean, I haven't been here for very long. I okay. just moved in in September. Um, we've, we have frequented a lovely, um, Mexican, uh, cart, a food cart. It's literally right across the street from us. Um, and I, for some reason, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll have to, I'll have to get yeah, to see that name. Up, shoot me the info and I'll put yeah. it in the notes. Yeah. It's yeah. right next to a tiki bar called Chopper. So okay. some people may recognize that, but, um, yeah, it's a, a lovely place. We could just walk over there and grab some, uh, authentic Mexican food, which I really like. There's a lot of cool vintage shops in the area also, um, you know, that I, that I have seen, you know, driving by, um, there is a, uh, a landmark famous breakfast place right down the street as well. So, you know, I mean, there's, What's that there's, called? there's the landmark <sighs> you know, uh, <laughs> I put you on the I spot. Just, I cannot remember it right That's now. Okay. Like it's just, yeah, That's I probably okay. should have come prepared for that. No but I, I was prepared for the Franklin spots and also living in Goodlettsville, I did want to give a shout out to um, on Main Street, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Goodlettsville has an antique mall that's on Main Street. And so if you are an antiquer and you like to do those things and find rare finds, um, there are some, you know, lovely places there. Um, and there's also, um, where was it? Let me see here, I have it. It is called Rare Bird, Rare Bird Antiques. Okay. And um, it's right there in that antique district. And I've been in there a few times and they have some really cool things. And there's also a great vinyl uh, place called Disco Joe's. Look at you overachieving. You know, I asked my guest to bring me three and you've given me five. So I've written down, I've written down a few, but if you, you know, you'll send me the information and I'll have, we'll have yeah. the links and everything for everybody. Cause that's one of the yeah. cool things. If you live in like somebody that's maybe lived in, I don't know, Thompson station or Spring Hill or cool Springs, most of their life, uh, they don't really have need to go to Mount Juliet or Lebanon or Goodlettsville or Hendersonville or Gallatin or whatever. And so knowing these things are out there are pretty cool. And, you know, like I lived in Wichita, Kansas for 30 years and there was stuff in the downtown that they revitalized that I never knew about because I never went there. We were west side of Wichita. So we shopped west side. We ate west side. I did a lot of business west side. You know, and, and Wichita is only like 250,000 people, right? So, you know, there's not a whole heck of a lot. It was a huge change when I come to Nashville and fight the traffic and stuff, right? So I can tell you that. Uh, so it's great to have all those little different places uh, available. Uh, any, any last things you want to add or anything else we need to know about uh, Hannah? Oh, about Hannah. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I, um, I really do uh, love living in Tennessee. I think, uh, you know, I've been here 23 years. Uh, I do miss the ocean, however, of Florida. But, you know, it is beautiful here. It's kind of become my home. Um, I have uh, embraced the sports here only because my boyfriend is a native Nashvilleian. And so <laughs> I don't think he would allow me to not uh, be a Titan fan, especially uh, how well they're doing right now, of course. Right. So, well, I, uh, yeah. so I went to yeah. my first professional football game here. Uh, oh. The guy I bought the business from had a couple of spare tickets for the Titans versus Chiefs game. And us being from Kansas, he said, oh, your team's playing. My team didn't play. They didn't even show up. 
Like they, they beat themselves, but I really enjoyed it. It was the first professional football game I'd been to. And, and I had a blast. I'm a cricket guy and a cricket field is so huge. I'd rather watch it on TV than be at the ground, but football and hockey, I found the, the, the grounds are small enough that you can actually see the action. So I enjoyed, I loved our Titans game. And then I went to the Preds the other night against, um, who were they playing? Doesn't matter. They lost. Oh, uh, the Buffalo. They were playing Buffalo, New York, and uh, okay. we got creamed. But uh, which was really odd because the the Buffalo hadn't been doing really good, but they bought the game. But I had a blast going to that. So so I'm learning to love uh, sports that I would have not had any interest in if I hadn't come to Nashville. So that's exciting. It is exciting. I I grew up with brothers. I'm the only girl. And so I grew up with, you know, Monday night football and uh, tons of sports in the house. Uh, so I was always very used to it and had, you know, favorite teams, of course. And um, I'm a certified yoga instructor also. I think that's something else that I could share with you as well. Um, I, I got that uh, instruction uh, certification just a few years ago, um, even though I had been a, a practitioner for many years. But I went ahead so and, you, and went through that. Do any of that. Do you do any of that on the side, like side hustle? I don't actually know. Um, It's funny because right before I got the job in Franklin that had me moving from Cookville to Franklin, it was right after, I guess it was probably in 2017 or so when I got my certification for yoga um, instruction. And um, my friend had just opened up a yoga studio in Cookville and she was going to have me there teaching. I was going to teach a class for her. Um, But I got the job in Franklin and I ended up, you know, moving moving out to this area. So um, no, I, I have not used it. I just, for myself, it's, it's, you know, lovely to be able to know how to have a practice for myself uh, to keep me moving, uh, you know, throughout the day in the morning. And um, yeah, I just, I use it really just for personal right now, but right. yeah, at some point, you know, I could share it again with the world. To- I have to tell a story on myself when, you know, when hot yoga came out, right. And I was hearing about hot yoga, this and hot yoga, that I'm like, man, it's already hard enough for ugly people to go do stuff. And now they're only letting these beautiful people, these hot people into hot yoga. And my wife goes, no, that's not what hot yoga is. I'm like, well, that's what it sounds like. They show the pictures and they're all beautiful people. She said, no, no, that's not what hot yoga is. So like, you know, sometimes just a dumb Aussie just don't get it. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it's good to, it's good to learn and expand my horizons. But uh, yeah, I have, I, I play cricket and I'm, you know, I'm 54 years old and, and I haven't been able to play for the last couple of years. And so I'm like, I'm stretching the bowling arm and I'm like, oh man, you know that, uh, yeah, that's like, it's going to take a while to get back up to playing speed, you know, because you run around with all these Indian and Pakistani kids that are like 20 college students and, and they're bowling at 100 miles an hour. They're pitching the ball at 100 miles an hour and you're just going, duck, I didn't even see that thing. So I'm looking to get, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back out on the cricket field. Did you know Nashville has over 50 cricket teams? I did not know that. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I knew like, there was soccer, the soccer club, uh, but I didn't know about cricket. So, yeah, so 50 cricket teams, and then they have another, um, they have 50 tennis ball cricket teams that play softball cricket, and I think they have 20 hardball cricket teams that play with a ball about as hard as a baseball. A little harder, actually, because the ball actually has to bounce before it comes up to the batsman. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. So that was one of the things that excited me about moving to Nashville is Wichita only had five cricket teams. And so wherever there's... uh, uh, Indian hotel owners or college students or Pakistani gas station owners and and that sort of stuff they all form their teams and so it's kind of cool to I'm one of the only white guys that plays cricket but then you get a few Kiwis you get a few New Zealanders a few Englishmen a few South Africans uh, a lot of uh, West Indians come play cricket as well so it's uh, it's a good melting pot if you ever get a chance to watch a just a recreational game out in a park, you'll see them playing out there and you go, what the heck is that? And, you know, and they're hitting a ball, hitting a ball, running around. You don't know what the heck's going on, but. Have you been to a a few? Yeah. So, uh, so down (laughs) here, so so they have three grounds in Lewisburg. So it's just about 40 minutes South of Franklin, I guess. Uh, This guy, Indian guy bought a piece of property and built three cricket fields. And then um, White's, White's Creek, White something or other. Uh, there's a cricket field out there and then there's another couple around town where they play you just sort of have to google nashville cricket you know and hope you didn't get the ones about the little bugs 
I had a guy call me one time in Kansas, like Saturday morning. And he goes, uh, is this the Cricket Association? I said, oh, yeah, this is the Cricket Association. It's like 7 a.m. I'm like barely awake. I'm still lying in bed and I'm answering my answering the landline back then, 94, 2000, something like that. And he says, well, I found this. I found this cricket and it's got like yellow stripes on its back legs. And I'm like, I'm thinking it's one of the cricket guys that has put one of their American friends up to it. You know, and so I start playing along. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'll find a few of them around here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, and then I finally twigged. He was a farmer that was worried about his crops and this new breed of cricket that he found. And I had to clue him. I said, sorry, I thought you were playing a joke on me. I play cricket, the sport, not, I'm not a, what is it, an etymolo- entomologist? I don't know. You know, the, yeah. you know the, uh, the difference between an entomologist and an etymologist? The etymologist yeah. knows the difference. No, it's a difference. My my cousin is married to an uh, the bug guy. I think (laughs) you know what I'm totally screwed up. (laughs) We'll get comments on when I post this on YouTube and stuff. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like it's this and yeah, whatever. We're just having fun. Hey Hannah, it's been so great having you uh, on the show. Um, Thank you so much, and um, I look forward to following your success. Thank you so much, Ed. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show to tell my story. You bet.